Hey everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. And this video is going to be my review of the Creality CR10 Mini, which I'm having for 10 months right now. Uh, so this is a review of a printer that I've been using very much. Uh, it's in use almost daily here. Uh, well, daily is not really true, but I'm using it three or maybe two times a week. So yeah, it's, it's being used a lot. Um, I use it for larger prints uh, and I also use it for production work. So, uh, well, the printer is, is being used. Now, this review is done before I'm going to do any maintenance on the printer because I wanted to know uh, how long we can wait before doing any maintenance. So, uh, it's now 10 months out and I'm going to see that this printer needs some maintenance right now. But after, uh, well, using it for so much time and, and uh, filament, I think this is pretty darn okay. So, uh, for the full disclosure, I received this printer from Gearbest. Uh, there are no affiliates links in this video down below. And the reason therefore is that, uh, well, Gearbest want me to do things that I don't like. Uh, they want me to say things and uh, make videos that I don't like. So I'm not going to affiliate this printer to their website. Um, but I have to say that if you want to buy this printer uh, after this review, then uh, you can find it on several places like Gearbest, Deal Extreme, uh, Banggood. Well, they all got this printer, so you can find it. Now for this printer. Uh, the printer is the Creality CR10 Mini. Uh, it has a build platform that is 300 by 220 millimeters in size and a Z height of 300 millimeters. Uh, it comes with a nozzle that is 0.4 millimeters in thickness and the material diameter is 1.75 millimeters, so it's using normal filament. You can print PLA and what I like to use engine uh, with this printer. Uh, on the website they also say it can print ABS or car carbon fiber filaments or TPU or wood, that kind of things. Uh, but I wouldn't endorse you doing so because uh, using that kind of filaments can be abrasive for your nozzle or you have to have an enclosure around your printer and without this enclosure, well, the prints won't succeed. Um, you're printing on glass and I like it very much that you are printing on glass because uh, when working on glass you don't have to use any material for a, for a better adhesion. You just have to clean your glass very very good. Don't touch it with your hands so uh, there won't be any fat on the glass. And well if you do so then your prints stick to the glass like crazy. And uh, I've used it for PLA and engine. Those are my preferred materials to print. And it works very very well. So uh, I'm only cleaning my glass. I use a little bit of soap for that and this is it. I don't use any material on top of that. Now I have tried printing with ABS with the printer and for very small parts sometimes I do this without any enclosure and then I use some material to uh, have a better adhesion like glue stick or something like that. Um, but well if you want a very good successful print then please just use PLA or engine. An engine is very very strong. Uh, most of the times you can use engine instead of ABS and have very nice prints. When I received this printer one of the first things I made for the printer were uh, was the, the wheel on top of my extruder. Uh, this is a very very handy wheel and uh, the only reason I have it here is because then I can use my hands to feed filament through the extruder uh, and well it helps me feeding filament in or out the printer. And uh, well I think this is a very handy tool, uh, you should have it and uh, well if you have a printer and uh, it has an extruder that gives you the possibility to make this wheel on top of it, well please do so. Uh, there are many wheels like this on Thingiverse or other websites that share STL files and you won't regret it. Now as I said I haven't done any maintenance on the printer yet and you can see this. Uh, 
For example, when you take a look at the Z wobble on this print, uh, you can see that there is a, a slight bit of Z wobble here. And uh, the only thing I can fix this is by tightening the belts. Uh, I have to tighten the belts a little bit more. Uh, and also I have to make sure that I'm going to use the newer Merlin software. Because uh, the newer Merlin software uh, is, is better for this. Uh, but this is right out of the box. The printer is 10 months old, right out of the box. And uh, I have to do some things to make it better. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do to make it better. For example, you can uh, install the new Marlin firmware for the printer. Uh, for example, you can tighten the belts after you have used the printer for a long time. That kind of things. Maybe loop some things, because I haven't done anything. I haven't looped this printer. Never, ever. So, yeah, there are a few things I have to do. Um, the downside of this printer is that it yeah, it, it has only one Z-axis uh, rod. So uh, if you want to have a printer that is very accurate of, over the complete height of the printer, uh, then you want a dual lead screw printer. So you will have two Z-axis lead screws. Um, this printer has only got one. I have to say that it prints very decent with only Z one Z-axis lead screw. Uh, it has a heated bed which can warm pretty quickly. Um, also, when you're new to 3D printing and you're willing to buy a printer, um, make note of it that if you have a smaller platform, uh, so if your build platform is a little bit smaller, then your heating will be a little bit faster. Uh, so if you want to start a print right away after you have uh, started the, the, the commands for the printer, then uh, with a smaller platform your printer will start a little bit faster. Now I don't think this is a problem, um, I think that it's very handy to have a printer that can print 300 millimeters by 220 millimeters because that is something uh, yeah, you can use uh, if you're making parts for, for example, a cell phone or for example a tablet. Uh, then it can be very handy that your printer is bigger than the actual tablet. I like this printer. I like it a lot. Uh, the fact that I didn't have to do any maintenance on it for 10 months after excessive use and uh, that the printer is still holding on, well, it's great. Uh, also, the price of this printer is pretty good. Uh, it's a printer that you can find under the $300 mark, so uh, it's a cheap printer. It's way bigger than some other printers, like for example the Ender 3 or, well, that kind of printers. And yeah, it, it, it's a good printer. Um, that said, the downside that I don't like that much about this printer is that the control box and the printer itself are two separate units. So uh, you have to place them next to each other. And because the filament spool is on the control box, uh, there is also a little yeah, problem with this. Um, you can't place them directly to each other. Uh, you have to give it a little bit of space in between them uh, because otherwise your filament spool will be in the way for the printer itself. And uh, this is something I think should be yeah, uh, better. So uh, after I made this review video, I'm going to change this and I'm going to make another filament holder which is directly connected to the printer instead of to the, uh, to the control box. And then I can place the control box yeah, wherever I like. Now, this is pretty much the only real downside of this printer. Um, I like the way uh, everything works, I like the stability of the printer, I like how easy it is to connect it. When you buy this printer <coughs> you can literally uh, connect everything in, in about 10 minutes and start printing. So yeah, it's a, it's a very simple printer to work with and therefore I have to say that this is one of my best printers I am having. Uh, I've recently uh, given away a few printers uh, to schools and to uh, friends of mine who didn't have a 3D printer. And I have to say that this is one printer I'm not going to give away because 
well, I use it too much. Uh, I'm using it for production work, I'm using it for uh, rapid prototyping, that kind of things. So it's a very nice printer to have in your shop. So as I said, uh, this printer is a very nice printer to have in your shop. And uh, I know people who have multiple CR10 minis because, well, they are so reliable. Now, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like this video, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell button, because then you will be notified every time I make a new video. Also, if you like to support my channel, well, consider becoming a Patreon or giving a one-time donation. And the links for those can be found in the description down below. And as I said, I don't have an affiliate link to this printer. And the reason is that, well, uh, Gearbest uh, is changing its policy and wanted me to, uh, to do things that I don't really like. Uh, they wanted me to make videos about every promotion they have. They want me to, uh, to say things that is not my style of, of reviewing. So uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, maybe when they change their policy I will be working with them again. Uh, but for this moment I'm not going to do so. You can find this printer on Gearbest, on Banggood, on Dealextreme. There are a lot of sites where you can find this Creality CR10 mini printer. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time and well, maybe until later. Bye bye.